The dictionary will tell us that horror is an intense feeling of fear and panic. When I think of horror, I think of uh, something very unsettling, something that disrupts your everyday life. It's all about how it makes you feel. Your deepest, darkest fears turned into um, adrenaline when you're watching movies like this. It's the best part. That's kind of what horror is, is that you're dealing with something that's basically out of your realm. You're kind of like in their world and you're like, you got to use your smarts if you're going to survive. Also, when I think of horror, I think of something that when you watch it, it haunts your mind after you see it. I really love the psychological horror movies because I feel like those ones stick with me after I watch them. Um, putting yourself in the shoes, trying to figure out what you do. It's all circumstance. Just being in the moment, feeling like you're alive, it's, it's my jam. The first word that comes to mind when it comes to defining horror as a genre is adrenaline. Because I think it's that initial rush of actual adrenaline and endorphins in your system that kind of is the hook that gets us started on being horror fans for life. First horror movie experience, well, basically I'm wearing it here. John Carpenter's masterpiece, Halloween. That's like the first movie I remember, because, you know, it came out in 1978, and, you know, I was three years old at the time, so I don't think I saw it then. I, I probably saw it maybe in the early 80s, when I was a little older, by like when it was on TV or something. It's Halloween, the night he came home, when the deepest fears are made real, when the darkest nightmares come true. But I just remember it creeped me out, like the music, it was scary. That is my first horror movie experience. And it's like, so yeah, I would say I got I got started off on the right foot, right? <laughs> I got started off with, a, with a, 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 a good one. The first horror movie I remember seeing was Stir of Echoes. If you haven't seen it, it's uh, uh, Kevin Bacon stars in it. And he basically goes to a psychic and he has this portal in his mind opened and he can like talk to the dead and they're looking for this missing girl and he's kind of like the mediator to the afterlife but that movie i remember the scene where it flashes back to when the girl gets attacked she's like laying on the ground like being attacked and her nails are gripping the wood and they come off that just gave me the I must have been about two years old and my family went to see Halloween 2 in 1981. They took me as a baby to the <laughs> theater with them and I have these vague recollections of seeing Michael Myers slowly walk through like hazy hallways, dark hallways. So obviously for my first memory it's not like I remember the full movie but I definitely remember some um, aspects of it, some scenes, and this, like, even as a two-year-old, even as it's still a little kid, I can still barely remember those things, and I know, like, that got me started. It just got me interested, and there's something about the thrill of being scared that is attractive. I remember the first time I saw Psycho, and that movie really got me into horror. You understand? I don't hate her. I hate what she's become. I hate the illness. Wouldn't it be better if you put her someplace? You mean an institution? A madhouse? That movie really messed me up for a long time. In a good way, though, because I, I saw things differently. And, you know, that movie really kind of it makes you look at people in a different way. Looks are deceiving. You don't really know what someone's going through, so you should be careful. First horror movie memory. Um, Darkness Falls, 2003. Yeah, I was a little guy, and uh, my parents were watching this, and I just caught the intro, and I was watching it through the staircase, and it was hilarious because I was way too young, and it definitely scarred me. <laughs> which leads me into my next part, which is, did horror give me nightmares? And yes, it did. 
Um, this movie, Darkness Falls and The Grudge, uh, the American remake from 2004. Those are two movies that I've been scarred by since I was three, four years old. So it's pretty, uh, pretty hilarious. Um, it's kind of led to probably why I'm such a big horror movie fan today. Uh, yes, I've, I've had an, uh, dreams and nightmares about Jason and Michael basically chasing me in the woods or around the neighborhood. So, like, they was after me, and I was trying to... Basically, I was trying to survive, you know? So, yeah, I've, I've, had, a, I've had a few dreams of, uh, of that. Has horror movies ever given you nightmares? Definitely The Exorcist. So I remember seeing that when I was like 16. My friend was watching it at her house and then we went to a haunted house after, like I don't know why. I was so terrified. I remember like every time closing my eyes, I would see the image of uh, Captain Howdy. It was just so terrifying to me. And I know like backstories where like people have died on set of that movie. It's just all around terrifying, but a great film. So, has horror movies ever given me nightmares? The answer is yes. I have had plenty of nightmares from horror movies. A lot of it was Freddy Krueger, obviously, and Michael Myers. I've just had a lot of nightmares about Freddy and Michael uh, since I was a child. I can tell you what, man, you know, like the horror movie, your dreams are ultimately, you know, can't hurt you. So I'd have to say my nightmares were uh, pretty good horror movies. <laughs> It scared the shit out of me and you know I woke up fine so I can't complain just just some nightmares how has it affected my life well it's terrified me in moments of it but it's also um, produced great things to do art off of uh, I bought probably like three four hundred movies at this point um, got Michael Myers sweatshirts and shit and all kinds of stuff like that so most people think of me as the horror movie guy so I mean that's kind of cool, I guess. So the way in which horror has affected my life is that I feel like there's kind of this certain side of me that I can I can say I'm a horror fan to quote unquote normal people, but I can't necessarily just sit some people down and show them say maniac and expect them to be okay with it and not think I'm a serial killer. For me, it's an escape, okay? It's an escape from my daily grind. So if you can, you know, for an hour, an hour and a half or two hours, if you can, like, just get some stress relief. <laughs> I know that may sound strange, but yeah, horror movies, and when it comes down to it, can be a stress relief because it, it, it gives you an escape from your everyday uh, grind and troubles and worries. Does horror turn me on? No, I don't think it does. Um, at least not sexually. But I would tell you that there are great scenes in certain movies, and... Um, there are moments where, like, when I watch a certain horror movie, like if Halloween's on and I've had a rough week, um, I'll get geeked, I'll be excited. Um, there's a sense of calmness and relaxation with the music. <laughs> Does horror turn you on? I definitely get an adrenaline rush from watching horror. I feel very invested in horror movies. Yeah, I would say so. It gets me excited. It gets my blood boiling. Now that can be like a loaded question there, Eric, okay? But I will say they definitely get the juices flowing. Now it could lean to towards a turn on when you're talking vampires because they're with vampires always like going for the neck, right? So it's very common knowledge, like a lot of women, they love their neck to be, that's like a turn on, right? So. When a vampire goes for the neck, there's just, there's something sexual about that and arousing. Underrated horror movie uh, to recommend. You guys might make fun of me, but I really like this movie for some reason. It's called The Strangers Pray at Night 2, the second one. I know the first one a lot of people like, I think, but the second one is really, really good, especially if you're like an 80s slasher fan. It's pretty much a tribute to that. If you guys have seen it, the pool scene is aces. The music to that is just so perfect. It kind of takes a lot of twists and turns if you're into that. And underrated movies that I think people need to check out. Um, 
the collector from 2009 and um, Last House on the Left also from 2009 um, the remake uh, I think both those are really really good I think the Last House on the Left remake never gets talked about you know there's some other really good movies out there but I think when it comes to two that I would really want to give people a fair shake to would be those ones I know Last House is a little it's a little over the top I know there's like a really hard scene to get through in the middle of the movie but if you can get past that it's a really good second half watch um, more of a vengeance movie I'm gonna go with The Haunting now this is the remake and I didn't know at the time it was a remake this is from 1999 was when it was made but I also have the original, which is from 1963, okay? Now, I watched the remake first, because I didn't know this, the original existed. So I watched the original, the remake first, and I, li I love it. It's, you know, I mean, it's, yes, it's not ultra gory, okay? But, again, to me, horror does not equal gore. Horror is the, that fear, right? That fear, that uncertainty, that shock to the system. So I believe this movie delivers it. And even the original is good, because I did go back and watch the original. Now I'm like, to me, the remake, it paid it paid tribute to the original, right? To, so I can dig when a remake can do that. Yeah, I would say very underrated. It's not very rated very high on IMBD. And I would give this one a try, if you haven't seen it already. So for my underrated horror movie suggestion, I actually had another movie in mind, but I started thinking about the theme of this project, and it's basically the uh, what, it, what it is to be a horror fan. So I decided to go with the movie May from 2002, because I feel like the character of May in the movie really kind of defines a lot of us in the horror community. I can say, personally, for myself, I feel like a, a connection to May, that, that awkwardness, you're just... You're just kind of awkward. You don't quite fit in. You're a little weird. You know, you're a little misunderstood. And I feel like the, the character in that movie really reflects what it's like to be a horror fan. Can be lonely. A little, you know, people, not everyone understands why you like blood and guts and death and whatnot. Um, so, and it's just a really good movie too, underrated. So definitely check out May if you never have. I'm a subscriber for almost 10 years now so I mean been following you for a long time since I was a kid so but yeah dude um yeah uh you keep doing you hope you uh keep doing those drunken tears and stuff like you know get a kick out of those I've listened and re-listened to those for years now so um you know don't feel like nobody's watching because uh us hardcore fans are still watching it so you take care I appreciate you peace out I think this is a really cool project. I'm excited to learn more about others and how they see horror as a genre. I think this is really cool, Eric. And yeah, this was fun. I, I don't really film myself, so this was cool. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Eric, for putting this together. So Eric, I'd like to thank you for inviting me to uh, do this collaboration with you again. It's always good to hear from you. And as you said before, those years ago, one of these days, we're all going to be in the dirt, right? But until then, let's keep it going. Let's do this every now and every so often. I'm, I'll, I think it's a good thing. So until next time, keep it retro. I want to thank everybody that was involved. I want to thank everybody that always supports me for basically almost 10 years now, almost a decade of the Death Twitch, if you think about that. Anyway, just big thanks to the few out there that have stuck around through thick and thin, ups and downs, and everything. So this has been fun. Thanks a lot, everybody, and I, I'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.